Hey y'all, welcome to your first year of drum lessons, week 21, drum pad edition. My name is Penny Larson and I am really happy to have you with me today. We missed last week for life reasons that aren't super important. Um, thank you to, the, to those of you who, who checked in on me to see where your lesson was. Your lesson is here. I'm sorry that it is a week late. Sometimes life happens. Um, I guess I'm sort of tacitly granting you permission to take weeks off from practice here and there because life happens. Because life happens. Anyway, we're back. Um, we have kind of a lot of subjects to get through today, so I, I am excited to be here because there's so much to talk about. We're going to talk about the three Radom Q variations. So we're going to finish up our sort of sampler introduction to rudiments, which means now we're going to start talking about how to apply them. And we'll, we'll do that here on the drum pad, but then we'll also do that on the drum set as well. Because the problem with rudiments is a lot of times people learn them, but especially people who only play drum set and don't do drum line or, or um, more legit forms of percussion tend to forget that they learned the rudiments, right? Um, you know, there's the single stroke roll and the double stroke roll and the paradiddle, and we all know those, but then when it, and flams, of course, and drags, but when it comes to some of those variations thereof, we forget that we learned them and we forget why we learned them. And so we're going to, now that we're going to finish up our introduction, we're going to talk about, hey, how might you actually use this now that you know it? And why should you practice it and get it in your hands? We're also going to start talking about ghost notes on Friday on the drum set. And we're going to do a quick little primer today. And finally, we're going to do a flam exercise that I have played forever, say it with me, that I learned in drum corps that I totally love. So buckle up, there's tons to do today. So let's, let's dive in. So the Radom accused, these are 38, 39, and 40 in our list of 40 rudiments. The Radom accused fill out the drag section. Really, the Radom accused are single stroke fours with a drag in front of them, right? So if we go way back to rudiment number two, the single stroke four, if I put a drag in front of that, Right? There you go. <laughs> that, that's a random cue. And so I'm starting with the single. This is number 38. So it's, the, it's that single stroke four, but just with a drag in front. The accent, the last note, is going to be the same hand that plays the drag at the front, right? So. Like I've been saying about all the drags, you can either play it as a clean set of doubles or more of a press, right? And on a drum pad, sometimes getting that press to really sound like anything worth doing is a little weird it'll make more sense when you play it on the snare drum, the actual drum, and you really feel how that sounds different then, right? The double Radom EQ, now I'm just putting another drag in front, still with the same hand though, so it's two lefts and then two rights, and the Radom EQs all just alternate, right? So the double Radom EQ, And then the triple. I'm kind of doing a quick overview and then we're going to talk about some stuff that's true for all of the Radom EQs. So the triple, number 40, now is just three drags. So a lot of times the Radom EQs are going to happen with an eighth note in front, right? So, so the way I'm playing these is I'm thinking one triplet and, right? One triplet and, two triplet and, three triplet and, four triplet and. 
So the triplet is on the downbeat and the drag is, right, we've talked about that, like an appoggiatura, an approach note. It's, it precedes the downbeat. Um, let's put on the metronome real quick so we can see how this sounds. Um, let's try 90. I don't, it, I'm not trying to do this fast. I want you to see how it sounds, right, in relation to where the downbeat is. So how that how it relates is dig it dot dig it dot dig it dot dig it dot the triplet starts on the beat and then we hit the accent in the middle four and then with the rademacue with the drag Double, kind of like the double paradiddle, is a beat and a half, right? And then the triple, like the triple paradiddle, is two whole beats, right? Two, three, four. So, what's very common is instead of playing the triplet on the downbeat, you land on the downbeat. So the tr same thing with the th single stroke four, number two, right? We talked about this way back when. So instead of playing one triplet and, or sorry, one triplet and, two triplet and, three triplet and, four triplet and, right? We're gonna land on the downbeat, so and triplet one, and triplet two, and triplet three, and triplet four. We can do the same thing with the rademacue, okay? So the only, the thing I'm gonna do is bump it one eighth note. So instead of starting on the beat, I'm gonna start on the and. So that looks like this, okay? So this is the single rademacue. I didn't write any sticking or anything else in here because who cares, right? This, this works for all of the stickings of the rademacue. I'm just taking the rademacue itself and bumping it onto the eighth note. I'm putting an eighth note before it, right? So one and triplet two. I'm still not talking about, don't look down here yet. I'm still not talking about how we're gonna interpret those grace notes, that drag, okay? Cause there's no peeking. There's a couple different ways we can do that. We're gonna talk about that in one sec. First, let's just focus on the fact that we can bump the rademacue to the ands. And so let's let's play through all three of those. So one, and triple two, and triple three, and triple four, and triple one, and triple two, and triple three, right? So I'm gonna start with just like kind of an extraneous note, and then on the and I'm gonna play the rademacue. Right? Cool, right? That, honestly, that's how, that's how I tend to think of the rademacue as being used more often. I've heard that referred to as a tap rademacue. Whatever, it's a rademacue with a tap in front of it. Sure, call it a tap rademacue. But really what's going on is it's a rademacue that's displaced to the and. Okay, so let's do the double rademacue. Remember, that's a beat and a half, so this is gonna be a little weird. We're gonna still put that eighth note in front, but it's gonna be a little bit interesting how it relates to the downbeat.
Right, see, so the double, the double is kind of like the double paradiddle. It really works best in 3-4, and we're talking about a lot of stuff with the Rademacue right now, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. We've seen that before. Like I say, if you really want to want some specific examples about how the double Rademacue works in 3, either wait until we have some of those examples or go back and look at double paradiddles. We did some things where we were specifically doing 3-4 and 6-4 and stuff like that. And the double Rademacu works exactly the same way in terms of the time feel and how it relates to the beat. Or you can just play it against the beat, which is also very cool, right? The triple Rademacu, now we're gonna land, because it's two beats long, it'll work more like the single Rademacu, we're gonna land on beat three and then on beat one, right? So it'll, it'll take up half the measure. And it was before, but we were landing on the and after two and the and after four, and now we're gonna land on three and one. Okay, make sense? Like I say, if, you, if you're stuck at any part of these, review your single stroke four, and then review your drag, and then review your paradiddles. And Rademacus are kind of a mashup of all of those things put together. So now let's talk about interpretation. You've been hearing me play these very, the drags are very tight right to the beat, okay? And I've been doing that with all my drags. We've talked a little bit about how you can interpret drags and how as things speed up, you need to worry about how you're gonna interpret them a little bit more. I've been saving this up to talk about interpretation with the Rademacus. Because for me, the Rademacus are where the drag interpretation really becomes very noticeable. And so if I take this second form of the Rademacus, the eighth note with the drag in the middle and then the triplet and then the accent. I'm bad, I didn't write the accent, I apologize. There's two ways that I hear this drag interpreted, okay? I tend to interpret it as a 32nd note, okay? I grew up, if you know anything about what now seems like ancient drum and bugle core, I grew up in like the shadow of the 27th Lancers and, um, and the Boston Crusaders who are still around, but the East Coast of Massachusetts especially was highly influenced by, by more Scottish, and, and drum corps has always been an American style of marching percussion, but a lot of the corps in Massachusetts were very influenced by more Scottish type playing rather than some of the looser styles. And so, our drag interpretation tended to be this tight, precise 32nd note articulation, right? So that first note kind of, this, this is how it's written, right? Okay, this is how I'm playing it, as a 16th note, and then two 32nd notes, and then a triplet, and then the release, right? So what I'm doing is one E and triplet two, okay? That double, counts for the E. Play that for you really quick. So let me play it without the double first. One E and triplet two, right? So the double is a different articulation than the triplet, right? It is 32nd notes, sometimes even crammed to almost be not exactly 64th notes, but it's, it's very much a binary, very crammed right up. Right, it's very, it's just very tight and precise. And I try to play, that's what I'm shooting for when I play Radom Accus. A more common, especially drum set interpretation, but 
a very common, even on marching snare drum interpretation, is to make the drag part of triplets. So now, and I didn't write in the sticking again, because like I said, who cares? It works for either of the Rademachus. We already did the sticking. But, so just to talk about it, this would be for the single Rademachus, right, left, left, right, left, right, left. Right? Da, 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 da. So then the Rademachus becomes almost a sticking choice for articulating 16th note triplets. And that's cool. And like I say, in a lot of ways, that's more applicable to the drum set. And when we start talking about Radom cues on the drum set, I'm going to rely heavily on that more triplet interpretation, right? When I play Radom cues on the pad, when I think about them in like marches or, you know, more legit like classical music, if I see a Radom cue, I'm going to think of it as interpreted more in that 32nd note kind of feel. That's what I grew up with, that, that up here, that's how Radha McHugh's sound, very right? right? Not Radha McHugh's are, are harsh and brittle, right, for, for me. They're not super smooth and legato. They can be, right? I am very much talking about my sort of innate approach to their interpretation, but my my preference for how they're interpreted certainly not only isn't the only interpretation, but it's, it's not the only valid one, right? Like lots of people only play these as the triplet interpretation. Totally cool, right? So for now, I just want you to be aware that both of those interpretations exist. Play them both, work on them both. I'm still going to work on the one that's more 32nd based, but especially when we do the tap Rademachu, when we put the tap in front. Right, there's a lot of logic in making it, making that drag, just rounding it out to be a triplet. There's, there's a lot of logic to that, okay? And this 32nd note, 16th note triplet interpretation works for all of the drags that we've been talking about these last few weeks, right? Like I say, it, it shows up most heavily in the, in the Radom EQs, but double drag tap, single drag tap, the drag paradiddles especially, right? You can totally have those with a triplet kind of vibe, especially the drag paradiddle number two, because now we're, that's kind of functioning like a double paradiddle, and so now we're going to be that a beat and a half, and so now we're going to be in three, and so now maybe we're thinking of that as, you know, six notes plus two twos, so now suddenly we're, we're at like, you know, nine notes-ish, right? If we put a, if we put a tap in front, we've got We've got like the, this more triplet kind of feel. And so then a triplet interpretation can make sense. Like I say, it, it stands out the most in the Radom EQs, but with any of the drags, you can interpret that drag a little differently. And sometimes it'll just be in the context of the piece you're playing. You'll be like, oh, I need to do this drag a little bit different to make it work. And sometimes it could be something where you want to you want to use that interpretation of that particular drag rudiment over and over again. I think with the Radom EQs, it's worth just working on both interpretations, and then seeing how it works with some of the other drag rudiments. Like all of our sheets, this will be down below as a PDF. This I think 
is pretty self-explanatory. I don't, I don't know that you need to worry about printing it out, but I wanted to at least show you, right? So here's our single random queue. Here it is with that eighth note in front. And then here still this first note is this first note or this first note. And so we've still got the same form, just rhythmically we're interpreting it a little bit differently. And like I say, when I hear, when I, when someone wants me to play Radha McHugh, this is what I'm thinking, this one, right? And this one is a, a viable alternative. For some people, this is what they think of first. So whichever one feels better to you, start with, and then work on the other one too, okay? So I hinted a couple weeks ago now, because we missed last week, that this week we were gonna talk about ghost notes. Ghost notes are um, I don't know what I can say about ghost notes. Ghost notes are the way that a drum beat breathes, right? Um, you can certainly play drum beats without ghost notes and they can sound great, but when you add ghost notes, suddenly everything just changes. Um, and I will show you a crazy example of that on Friday. But for now, we're just going to do a couple simple primers. And so this, again, will be down below. We're going to do a 16th note version and two 16th note triplet versions. Okay, and like we've talked about before, I'm writing my triplets in 12-8. So we've got an accent. And then right after the accent, right before and after the accent, we've got these quiet notes. So we're going we're gonna to play everything quiet unless it's accented. And the reason that I wrote the accent underneath is because even though I'm playing my left and my right hand together, I'm going to play that accent just with my left hand. Okay, So literally everything is going to be quiet except for the accent with the left hand. Number one is just one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And the thing we're trying to work on is soft, loud, soft, right? So okay, that's it. Super simple. to play, right? To play quicker, it gets a little trickier because we've got that down, up, down thing going on. But the pattern is really basic. This is actually trickier than what we will do on Friday. That's why it's a primer, right? We're kind of trying to, to push the physicality before we have to worry about actually playing it on the drum set. Number two, just triplets. See how when I'm accenting my left hand, first of all, I'm not, I'm not getting it super crazy high. I'm trying to get it as high as I can, but that, that, that's a tough move, right? But then also, I'm keeping my right hand down, so the accent is this, and it's not a flam, right? Or I'm attempting for it to not be a flam, right? It shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be that. It should literally be both notes hitting dead on exactly at the same time. So then number three is just one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet.
if you've got a pad like I do that has two different sounds, this is kind of a cool one to work on with two different sounds. Let's go back to number one. Number two. And number three. Right, real simple. It's all about that one move. And just getting in the habit of playing together like that with your left hand loud and your right hand soft still. Okay, so like I say, super simple primer for Friday. Okay, last is an exercise that, like I said earlier, I've played since I marched in drum corps. This wasn't an exercise that my drum line did. I picked it up somewhere. I'm pretty certain that I have personalized it along the years. Uh, I learned it kind of by ear and memory, which is, <laughs> One of those is usually okay, but ear and memory is, that's asking for trouble. You'll notice it's called flam workout, and yet number one has no flams. That's because the pattern in number two is tricky enough that I wanted to give some time for you just to adapt to the sticking. If you're looking at the sticking, it's kind of paradiddles, right? I've got right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, and then reversed. In the second line, I've got drags, and then what will eventually be Swiss Army triplets. And then the whole thing repeats because we, we end up on the left hand on the third line. But this is, this is the same pattern as the top, just mirrored, okay? And then the bottom is the pattern with flams. This one, I really do encourage you to download and print out because um, I think it'll take some time to learn. The first example may or may not help with the example with flams. Um, I'm going to tell you truly, right? The flam example, there's it's flam taps and inverted flam taps. And so it's not really paradiddles. It, it doesn't feel like paradiddles to me when I'm playing it. When I play the first example, right, I've got... Kind of feels like paradiddles just with weird accents, right? So, paradiddle, 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 right? The second example, Not, not so much, right? So that's the basic pattern, okay? And that happens three times, and then we do this turnaround pattern. So this is the fourth measure. It's, every, it's the second measure of every other line, right? The first time we see it, it's... And then the second time... What did I tell you about the way I interpret drags? These are flam drags, and I'm interpreting them as 30-second notes. And obviously, in number one, they don't have flams, so they're just tap drags. But where they came from, the original, number two is the original exercise, right? Number one is kind of the workout to get ready for the workout. But so then the fourth line in number, the fourth measure, sorry, in number two, And the eighth measure in number two.
And same thing, it, it's mirror image, right? The fourth measure and the eighth measure are the same, just starting the fourth measure starts with the left, the eighth measure starts with the right. Let me play through this for you with a metronome so you can see, because especially that fourth measure, we're kind of crossing the beat a little bit, and so it's a little confusing. I'll play number one a couple times at a couple different tempos, and then number two at a couple different tempos. But really, if you can, here's the pattern, right? So it's para diddle, para diddle, para, para, para diddle, okay? So if you want to learn it by paradiddle, that's the sticking pattern. And then the accent pattern is just one and two and three e a four e n. Okay, and that's that accent pattern is the same for all of these measures, except for the turnaround measure, which is tap drag, tap drag, tap drag, tap drag, uh, two two sixteenth note triplets. And again, we're going to play those as Swiss Army triplets, right? Okay. So let me do this nice and slow. The first time we'll do it at 70 beats per minute. And maybe we'll do it at a, a few different tempos just so you can see how it sounds. Uh, and then number two, I'll play, I'll play pretty fast for you because this exercise really sounds cool. Um, I bet that it had a name or that it has a name that I don't know unless I'm doing it completely, completely more different than the original than I think I am. Um, but I've never known what to call it. And so for a while I called it like Groovin Paradiddle Flames, which is very cringe, right? But I don't know what to call it, but the second version of it you'll see is very kind of groovy. Like I can see this as something you would play as a Nowadays we call it a cadence, but when I was a kid we called it a street beat, right? So the thing that the drum line would play while the whole drum corps is like marching, right? Because it, cause it's groovy. Okay, so let's try number one at 70 beats per minute. Four, one, two, three, and a four, and a. Okay, let's try it at, I don't know, 90. Let's be a little different. Let's try 95. One, two, three, four, Iana. And let's try 120, which is that kind of street beat kind of tempo. One, two, three, four. Right, even without the flams at 120. It's kind of a workout. So now let's talk about the flams. So I've got this same 
sticking from my primary notes, but I'm adding these flams. And like I say, really this turns into flam taps and inverted flam taps now. Right? So there's my inverted flam taps and flam taps. So when I play a flam and then a note on the other hand, that's an invert. And when I play a flam and a tap on the same hand, that's a flam tap. So I've got, right? So I've got an inverted flam tap and then a flam tap and then same and then two flams and then a tap and then a flam and then an invert and then a flam tap. Woohoo! But that's the pattern over and over again. If you learn, like if we're in number two, if you learn the top line in number two, you've got the whole exercise except for the turnaround because all we're doing is swapping those measures back and forth, whether they start with the right or the left, right? Let's play through it. Let's try the same tempos. Okay, so we've got 70 beats per minute first. One, two, three, and a four, and a. Okay, and then we did 95. One, two, three, Iana, four, Iana. Okay, and finally 120. One, two, three, and a four, Anna. I don't play this one enough. <laughs> um, 120 is about, is a, is a cool tempo to play this. Um, you could tell my accents were starting to like flatten with the non-accented notes. I tend to think of this as an act, as an exercise that I want to play closer to 140. Um, and my chops are like kind of grumpy at the moment, so I'm not even going to try it for you at 140. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll shed it for a few days and see if I can play it at something silly like 160, um, and upload that as a separate video to, to show off. Woohoo! Um, but part of the complexities of last week is that my, my, uh, my, my chops are a little sleepy after the last couple weeks. So that's going to do it for today. <sighs> wow. There was so much stuff today, right? We did our Rademacus. We are done with rudiments. So now, whenever anyone says to you, oh, drag pattern number one, you have to know what that is. Okay, that, that's like the rule. That's, that's one of the rules of this 
first year of lessons program is that remember y'all are perfect students you don't get to go on to next week until you know all of those rudiments and really you should know them all by name and you should know them by sound they all sound a, a little different right um even stuff like you know the difference between a Rademacue and a tap Rademacue and stuff like that or you should at least be able to identify oh that's a Rademacue played on the and right so so yeah please take the rudiments seriously it's it's amazing how many drummers ignore the rudiments and you know there are still discussions nowadays about oh do you need to learn the rudiments and I mean do you need to well no but I mean what are we doing here right if you're not if you're not taking the instrument seriously then don't take the instrument seriously <laughs> right um, uh, for about like 20 minutes in my youth I ran a very unsuccessful music store um, during which time I learned that I am not good at selling things but um, I'll never forget it was right around the time when grunge was first a thing and one of the one of the aesthetics of grunge was that you didn't really know how to play your instrument which was a hilarious kind of thing because most people in grunge bands actually are pretty good players you know um, definitely some people became very famous being mediocre instrumentalists but there's more to making music than being a technical virtuoso right but I'll never forget this kid came in the store one day and he said, you know, there's something cool about not being able to play your instrument. And I didn't even think about it, but just instinctively I said back to him, well, then what makes it your instrument, right? If we're, if we're trying to take the instrument seriously, we should be trying to take the instrument seriously. And honestly, I feel like rudiments is a very low bar on that ladder of taking the instrument seriously. There's only 40 of them. Uh, there's a great app called rude practice pad I think it is where there's a you know it'll play the rudiments with you but there's also an exercise where it'll shift through the rudiments with you I have my own rudiment today series um, which you can play just as a playlist and play through all the rudiments there's no reason to not know these 40 patterns right okay and then we talked a little about ghost notes as like kind of a concept and a primer I didn't really talk too much about why they're called ghost notes. That, that will make more sense on Friday on the drum set if you don't already know. And then we did this crazy flam workout, which I'm going to try and shed and play faster for y'all because, wow, my arms are tired. Um, that's really sad. I apologize for having my chops rusty while being here with you today. I will, I will do my best to do better. Um, all right. So, hey, I appreciate, again, those of you that checked in to see how I was doing. And I apologize again for last week. Um, life is hairy sometimes, and that's okay. Um, my, my dear mentor, Dick Desenzo, had this thing that he would say a lot, um, which is, and the beat goes on. And I actually, I have it written over the door of my studio. Um, because I was building my studio um, right around the time where he passed and it was pretty hard on me when he passed um, you know so but and the beat goes on so anyway I will see you Friday to talk about ghost notes and the terrifying reality of what they are that's I have a very silly sense of humor and I can't talk about ghost notes without thinking about ghosts and saying boo. So I'm warning you for Friday now. Um, but until then, I love you guys so much. Um, thank you for being with me today. If you want to like the video, that's cool. If you want to dislike the video, that's cool. Honestly, um, I appreciate your subscription and your viewership and your comments more than I really care about likes and dick. I, I mean, I know we're all playing that like YouTube game, right? Of like, oh, the more engagement and the more likes and the more this, that, and the other thing, the more we, people will show your video to and blah, 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 and you know, whatever, right? I don't, I don't ever expect to be, you know, have 10 million views on my videos. I'm, I'm much more interested in having um, a deeper connection with a smaller group of people, right? So 
Um, sure, if you want to share and, and, and like and whatever my videos, that's awesome. But leave comments, right? That's more interesting to me is like us actually having a relationship. Um, and also, yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, Penny Larson Drums, blah, blah, blah. And other than that, I will see you Friday. I hope you guys are well. Um, the weather's nice. That's lovely. And the world is... <laughs> wow, 2020 has been quite a year, eh? Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Um, I may talk about that stuff in the other videos, but not in these videos. Okay, I will see you guys Friday. I love you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye.